This is breaking news from CBS 11. We're running from inside the mall to dealers and they were just screaming to get out. That's when everybody started getting out. Then the store manager said for everybody to evacuate. Breaking news out of Texas now. El Paso police are investigating a mass shooting at a local Walmart and a nearby shopping center. According to CBS News, at least 19 people have been killed and 22 people have been hospitalized, including a four month old child. Tragic news out of El Paso this evening. Good evening. I'm Madison Sawyer. Right now, we know that police say one man is in custody after they say he went into that local Walmart with a rifle and shot multiple people. We can confirm that the suspected gunman, 21 year old Patrick Crisius of Allen, Texas, is in custody. CBS's Kenneth Craig has more on this developing story. Heavily armed police swarmed the Cielo Vista Mall as a helicopter flew overhead. This is a large crime scene, a large area, so we are systematically going through it and making sure that anybody in the area, number one, we're ruling out that no one is a suspect, and we're also making sure that those people that were separated or hurt are getting the care that they need. This Walmart employee said it took a moment to realize what was going on. I hear them closer and louder, and that's when I realize I'm like, okay, this is like serious. Mm -hmm. So I see people running right away, and that's when I react and I'm like, okay. This man witnessed the chaos as it unfolded. Some of uh, the other employees, they were coming in, and they would they would tell me that they heard some gunshots, and people just started bolting straight into the store uh, in order to get get to cover. And it is very hard to think about this. Um. Speaking at an event in Nevada, Democratic presidential candidate and former El Paso Congressman Beto O'Rourke reacted to the news as information was still coming out. So I just ask for, for everyone's strength for El Paso right now, everyone's resolve to make sure that this does not continue to happen in, in this country. On Twitter, President Trump said he's been in contact with Texas Governor Greg Abbott and is pledging the full support of the federal government. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. Now, as we mentioned, we have learned that Crucius, the alleged suspect, has ties to North Texas, specifically in Allen. Sources tell CBS 11 that Crucius attended and possibly graduated from Plano Senior High School in 2017. Our Yona Gavino is live in Allen tonight at a home that we are told Crucius may have ties to. Yona, what have you seen so far this afternoon? Madison, there's quite a bit of activity outside of this Allen home that you can see just over my shoulder. We haven't seen anyone go in or out the whole day, but take a look right here. We're giving you a live look at what is a local police officer and another a law enforcement officer out here. There have been uh, quite a number of unmarked squad of vehicles outside the door. Now, let's go back to the house because earlier today, Madison, we knocked on the door. And a gentleman answered, but he yelled, go away, and then closed the door. Now, we did knock on neighbors' doors, try to talk to them as well to shed some light on who lives here and what exactly the connection to the El Paso suspected shooter is. But neighbors say an older couple lives here, and one person said they believe that they may have seen a grandson here at the residence a couple years back. But again, we did show them a picture of Crucius, but no one could really tell us specifically if that was the young man that they had seen before. We are still working together. There are more details, but Madison, that's the very latest. Back to you. Yeah, no, we know you'll have more on that information in, in a little bit, especially on our 10 o'clock news coming up tonight. Now, crowds are already gathering in El Paso, ready to donate blood for those that were affected by today's shootings. This video was taken at a blood donation center in El Paso, and you can see people crowded in there, and the line actually at some of those blood donation sites have wrapped around buildings as people want to help out in the midst of this tragedy. We're told North Texas Red Cross will be assisting El Paso and those that are injured. And earlier this week, Carter Blood Care in North Texas reported that both in North Texas and nationwide, there was already a shortage for blood for transfusions and that there's an urgent need for people to donate blood. If you want to help, you're urged to donate blood at any Red Cross or Carter Blood Care location. Meanwhile, another Texas group is stepping in to help. The Texas Baptist men say that they've mobilized volunteers following the shooting. 
shooting and will assist in recovery efforts. Those volunteers will work with the Salvation Army to feed first responders and will stay in El Paso, they say, as long as needed. We're going to continue to follow that breaking news and provide you with updates both here and on social media, as well as our website, cbsdfw.com. Back here in Dallas, Dallas police are investigating a drive-by shooting involving a Lyft driver. It happened around 2.30 this morning on Bennett and Capitol Avenues in Old East Dallas. Now, police say someone fired multiple shots, hitting the driver in his lower body, and we're told that there were passengers actually inside of that Lyft car at the time. They were thankfully not heard and called 911. The Lyft driver was taken to Baylor Hospital. So far, no word on his condition and no arrest have been made. Switching gears now, many North Texans got a welcome visitor this morning in the form of rain. Meteorologist Jeff Jamison joins us with a first look at your evening forecast. Jeff, how much rain did we get? Well, some of us call, uh, saw quite a bit. We have no rain right now, though, Madison. On the radar, things are quiet, so if you have any evening outdoor plans, you should be fine. But rainfall amounts range from just a few one hundredths, for example, in Fort Worth, to about two thirds of an inch of rain up in Denton. Officially, just about a quarter of an inch of rain. One thing the rain and the clouds have done today. Keep temperatures way down. We're only in the upper 80s here for early August. You can't beat this. Still 87 in Fort Worth. Temperatures will continue to slide into the lower 80s hour by hour into the late evening. But notice what starts showing up again around 10, 11 o'clock tonight. Another chance of showers and thunderstorms. These may develop right on top of us on the future sky forecast. I've stopped it at 10 o'clock. Scattered storms, and they could linger for a few hours before pushing to the south by tomorrow morning. But we could have a few storms pop up even during the day tomorrow. So we'll talk more about these rain chances and, and then the heat is on for next week. We'll check out the seven day forecast coming up in a few. I know a lot of people are hopeful that that rain will stick around as long as possible. A jewelry store raid makes a shocking turn when federal agents are caught tampering with evidence. You know what? Where'd it go? Sure. Oops. Oh, we didn't see it. Yeah, surveillance video from this store in Raymondville, Texas, captures the moments that agents mishandled evidence. With one agent even mentioning the idea of robbing that store, warrants show that the owner is accused of money laundering, a claim that she says is now hurting her business. It was traumatizing. They came in with guns. It's just sad that, that it's come to the point where, where you can't trust your own, you know, you can't, you can't trust them. A spokesperson for the Department of Homeland Security says the appropriate agencies are aware of the video, but have no further comment at this time. A popular surfing spot in Southern California turned into a horrific scene after a cliff collapsed onto the beach. It happened late yesterday afternoon in Encitas near San Diego. Authorities there confirmed that three people were killed and at least two others were hurt. Res rescuers searched into the night to make sure that no one was trapped under the rubble. And tonight, there are still fears that there could be a secondary collapse, and therefore, a large portion of the beach continues to be closed. American rapper ASAP Rocky is back in the U.S. as he awaits verdict in his assault trial in Sweden. That verdict is expected on August 14th. A new video shows that the 30 year old rapper, whose real name is Rakeem Mayers, arrived in Los Angeles late last night on a private jet. Rocky spent a month behind bars in Stockholm on assault charges to which he pleaded not guilty. On Instagram, he called the experience humbling and wrote, quote, thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of my fans, friends, and anyone across the globe who supported me during these last few weeks. I can't begin to describe how grateful I am for all of you. Coming up, a massive data breach that could have left your personal information in the wrong hands. How Capital One is now handling the data theft of millions and the woman now in jail for stealing it. Plus, thousands of Lowe's workers will be searching for a new job. Why the company says those layoffs are needed to focus on the customer. 